Today we explore RSA algorithm developed by developed by Rivest Shamir and Adelman. It is a kind of asymmetric key encryption algorithm which uses two distinct keys. One key is used for encryption purpose and another key is used for decryption. We will see how RSA algorithm works in the background. The receiver will have two keys. One is public key and another is private key. He will share the public key with the sender and keeps the private key secret. So using the public key, the sender will send the plain text. The plain text will be encrypted using the public key into cipher text. This cipher text will be decrypted using the private key into plain text. So the receiver will receive the plain text sent by the sender. So the steps involved in RSA algorithm are key generation, encryption of the plain text and decryption of the cipher text. How to generate public and private keys? First we need to generate public key. For that to begin with we have to choose two large distinct prime numbers P and Q. And these P and Q should be kept secret. Let us take P as 3, Q as 11. In fact, we have to choose very large numbers, but we cannot manage large numbers as we are calculating manually. I have chosen P as 3, Q as 11. Next, we calculate N equal to P into Q. And phi of N, which is called the Euler's quotient, P minus 1 into Q minus 1. So, P is 3, Q is 11. N becomes P into Q, 33. And phi of N is p minus 1 q minus 1 3 minus 1 into 11 minus 1 is 20 so now we choose the public key e such that 1 is less than e less than phi of n and e should be relatively prime with phi of n that is gcd of e and phi of n should be 1 so let us take e as 7 satisfies both the conditions 1 is less than 7 is less than 20 and GCD of 7 and 20 is 1 so using E and N using E and phi of N next we calculate the private key D which is used for decryption so how should be D D should be the inverse of E mod phi of N in another words when we multiply both sides by E we get d e congruent to 1 mod phi of n that is when d is divided by phi of n it should leave the remainder as 1 so in our case e is 7 7 d should be congruent to 1 mod 20 so by inspection you can see d can be taken as 3 because 7 into 3 is 21 when 21 is divided by 20 the remainder will be 1. So we get the private key pair EN as 7, 33 sorry public key and then private key pair is D, N 3, 33. Now public key and private key are distinct they are different. If they are same it becomes symmetric key encryption. So next step is encryption of the plain text. The message that we want to encrypt first it should be converted into numerical value. So for that we use the following scheme A as 00, B as 01, C as 02 and so on. O becomes 14, P, value of P becomes 15, continue like this. S value will be 18, T value will be 19. Suppose we want to send the message stop secretly so stop should be first converted into its numerical values so you can see s is 18 t is 19 o is 14 p is 15 now this number has to be encrypted using the encryption formula c equal to m power e mod n where c stands for cipher text M stands for the numerical value of the plain text. E is the 
public key which is 7. Now corresponding to this block 18 it will be encrypted as 18 power e mod 33. So 18 power 7 mod 33 gives you 6 because 18 power 7 when divided by 33 it leaves the remainder as 6. So 18 is encrypted as 0, 06. Similarly corresponding to 19 it should be encrypted as 19 power 7 mod 33. So 19 power 7 when divided by 33 it leaves the remainder as 13. Similarly 14 and 15 are converted like this into 20 and 27. So the sequence 18191415 is encrypted as 06, 13, 20, 27. And this is called the ciphertext. So last step is decryption of the ciphertext. For that we have to use the private key D which is 3 in our case. The formula for decryption is M is equal to C power D mod N. Corresponding to 0, 06, the plain text we receive is 16 power 3 mod 33 is 18. 18 is nothing but S. So 16, sorry, 6 Q when divided by 33 gives the remainder as 18. Now corresponding to 13, it should be decoded as 13 cube mod 33. So 13 cube when divided by 33, it leaves the remainder as 19. But 19 is equivalent to T. So you can try for 20 and 27, they will be converted into O and P. So the receiver will receive the same plain text stop. So now this calculation 18 power 7 mod 33 how it is 6 that I will show you. If this num these numbers are small you can use the calculator. So first find out 18 power 7 in the calculator it gives a large number like this. Divide it by 33 you get a decimal number. So in the third step only this decimal part 0.1818 multiplied by n which is 33. The answer will be 5.994 something which is almost equal to 6. So 18 is encrypted as 6. This is using calculator. But if these two numbers are very large we cannot use the calculator. We have to use repeated exponent method first we take 18 square is 324 when divided by 33 the remainder is 27 now you square both sides 18 square is congruent to 27 square mod 33 so that used 3 mod 33 now multiply both sides 18 square into 18 power 4 is congruent to 27 into 3 which is 81. 81 divided by 33 the remainder is 15. Left side we get 18 power 6 but we want 18 power 7. Both sides multiply by 18. So 18 power 7 is now congruent to 15 into 18 divided by 33 the remainder is 6. Now if A is congruent to B, we know B is congruent to A. So we can also write this as 6 is congruent to 18 power 7 mod 33. So the cipher text is now 6. Okay, here I have written some FAQs. So these are the commonly asked questions. Why we should choose P and Q? very large prime numbers what happens if we choose small numbers okay 
so the reason here is the receiver always shares his public key and n if this n is small which is product of p and q anybody can find the factors of n as p and q once they come to know what is p and q they can easily calculate phi of n which is euler's quotient which is the basis for the key generation so easily anybody can find out what is the private key so for security purpose p and q should be very large prime numbers next is whether e and d can be same no they have to be distinct otherwise the very purpose of asymmetric key encryption fails because if both are same it becomes symmetric key encryption method so sometimes we get both of them same for example if i choose p as 3 q as 5 then n becomes 15 phi of n will be 8 if we choose e as 7 then d also results in 7 so public key and private key becomes same next how to calculate public key e we do not calculate e but we choose e in such a way that 1 is less than phi of n sorry 1 is less than e less than phi of n and also it is co prime with phi of n so you need the concept of modular arithmetic in this rsa algorithm so you may ask what is a mod n the meaning of a mod n is when a is divided by n the remainder we get is the value a mod n for example 10 mod 7 means when 10 is divided by 7 it gives the remainder as 3 next what is phi of n it is called the euler's quotient it gives us the count of numbers which are less than n and relatively prime with n I hope you understood RSA algorithm. Thank you for watching.